In the modern world, business ideas are becoming more and more technology-centric because people are more dependent on technology today than ever. As inventions and innovative business ideas are generated every day, it's becoming harder to stand out in the market nowadays. But where most of the company struggles to generate unique but effective ideas to enter the technologically dependent market, some ideas come from the weirdest places and stand out. And when we talk about any company that had their business idea from an unusual place, nothing comes close to the story of Uber, a James Bond film that gave the idea of Uber. In 2008, successful entrepreneur Garrett Camp stumbled upon an idea by watching a Bond movie, Casino Royale. The idea came to him after seeing one scene where James Bond was tracking another car through a mobile phone. This scene gave Garrett Camp an idea for a situation he was facing for a long time. Garrett Camp was already considered a successful entrepreneur in every way. His first startup, StumbleUpon, was a generous success, and he was living a quite comfortable life at this point. But what disappointed him was the traffic situation he was facing in his daily life, especially when it came to waiting for a taxi. So, after seeing that specific scene, Garrett Camp thought, what if I could track my ride like that? I'll know when my ride will arrive, how long that will take, and so forth. Garrett Camp was convinced that the idea was big, so he started brainstorming with his other friends about this. He wanted some of his friends to join the project, and one of these friends was Travis Cordell Kalanick. Travis Kalanick initially liked the idea, but he refused to join the project. However, Garrett Camp was convinced that he needed Travis Kalanick to make this idea successful, so he kept on trying. And one day, an incident changed Travis Kalanick's mind. And not only he decided to join Uber, but also decided to gaslight an entire industry as well. The Incident Once in Paris, Travis Kalanick had a night out with his friends, including Garrett Camp. At 2 a.m., both of them decided to hire a taxi and go home. The taxi driver was rude to Travis and his friends. And at a certain point, he threatened the entire group that he would kick them out if they don't behave properly. Travis Kalanick was extremely offended by this, so he voluntarily stepped out of the taxi and left. This incident made a big impact on Travis Kalanick. An impact so heavy that he finally decided to join the project Garrett Camp told him about. But when Garrett Camp wanted to do a startup, Travis Kalanick was specifically thinking about creating a better service than the other taxi companies provide. Before joining the project, Travis Kalanick knew what Garrett Camp wanted. Garrett Camp was very much driven to buy his parade of expensive luxury cars for the startup. He even leased an entire garage for this idea. But Travis Kalanick had something better in his mind. He stopped Camp and told him, instead of buying assets, we can simply turn an ordinary car into a service providing car through a mobile app. Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp pitched the idea and the business model to some drivers who were driving luxury limos and cars to provide ride-related services. After receiving great feedback in 2009, Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp finally started their company named Uber Cab. Uber and its bumpy journey In February 2010, Ryan Graves became the CEO of Uber Cab after its official launch. Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp both didn't want to run the company directly. But that changed in the same year in December, when Camp and Graves each signed over a large portion of their shares to Kalanick. In the beginning, Uber Cab received incredible results. Uber Cab quickly gained traction in San Francisco, where Uber Cab started its operation. It solved almost all the problems taxi companies were giving to their customers. It was efficient, easy to use, and transparent. But only a couple of months later, Uber Cab received a cease and desist order from the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency. In their book, what Uber Cab was doing was simply illegal. A taxi company can't operate in the city without proper permission. So, Travis Kalanick did what he does best. Find a loophole and then just ignore these accusations. Travis Kalanick simply took out the word cab from the company name and renamed it just Uber. And then he said, Uber is not a taxi company, but it's a technology company. Therefore, rules and regulations set for taxi companies don't apply to us. With this curveball, Uber and Travis Kalanick made themselves targets for the heavy hitting the authority was preparing for them. But Travis Kalanick knew he had to be ruthless and aggressive to fight such a war. 
the gravel. Travis Kalanick knew authority would do anything to stop them from operating. When Travis Kalanick showed his firm position, these people in power changed their antagonistic behavior towards the drivers of Uber. You see, Uber was merely a ride-sharing app. The car and the driver are just willing participants. So threatening them by saying their car will be taken if they drive for Uber caused a big problem for the company. So Travis Kalanick thought about using software as a solution. A software that will identify someone who's using the app to track it and then take proper action against that user by blocking him or shadow banning him from the platform. Uber called the software Grayball. This software unconditionally shadow banned any police officer or a local politician who tried to use the Uber app. This app kept the authority in the blind for a long period. Whenever someone tried to look at the Uber app, they would find out that there were no Uber rides available on the map. But in the reality, what they were witnessing was a preset map with zero updated results, where other Uber drivers were conducting their work smoothly. Grayball was an extremely effective and secret operation that Uber kept using for a long period. It took years for the proper authorities to realize that Uber blindfolded them with this unethical software. By the time it was discovered, Uber established itself as the leading ride-sharing app in the country. However, controversies started to pile up on top of Uber after this incident. Uber was also facing heavy backlash outside the country. In Mexico, Uber drivers were being kidnapped or killed by the taxi cartel. In China, scammers used the loophole inside the Uber app and scammed billions of dollars out of the company. To save Uber from such scammers, they wrote some secret codes inside the app to identify these scamming activities. But it was against Apple Store's policy and regulation, which put Uber in deep trouble. The toxic office culture and sexual allegations made the situation worse than it already was. At a certain point, Travis Kalanick decided to take a leave of absence to work on himself because he thought he was failing everyone. But after a month, Travis Kalanick was forced to leave the company in 2017. Because in many people's and investors' eyes, it was Travis Kalanick who created such an environment in the first place. All the controversies, the business is war strategy was building the company rapidly. But in the long run, this strategy is nothing but a time bomb for the company. After Travis Kalanick departed, Uber appointed a new CEO who worked on gaining a positive reputation for the company. Uber finally started to fix the controversies instead of avoiding them, which worked in Uber's favor. But there is no denying that it was Travis Kalanick who built this empire. Uber Today Today, Uber is considered to be one of the biggest ride-sharing technological companies in the world. In 2021, Uber made a revenue of $17.46 billion. With over 29,000 hungry creative workers constantly working in the company, it's safe to say that Uber will rule over the ride-sharing industry for a long time. But there are other tech giants such as Google that are working on their ride-sharing business models. This will bring immense pressure on Uber in the future. And only then we'll truly know what the company will do to tackle such competition. Until then, the throne is truly theirs.